All right, so let me first thank the organizers for organizing this wonderful meeting every year. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to talk uh, today is about uh, thermodynamic uncertainty relations uh, in, in the field of stochastic thermodynamics. So I'll briefly flash uh, the, the theoretical results that we have as well as some of the ex recent experiments that we have done in collaborations with various groups. Uh, so these this relations are both the theory and experimental work you can find in this set of work, but the first two papers are primarily the theoretical results which was done by my PhD student, Shushant. Uh, and these two are experimental, recent experimental papers. Uh, one is done in collaboration with a group, of, group by Mahesh and his student, Shohom. Uh, and another experimental paper is done in collaboration uh, from Weizmann University. Okay, so let me very briefly uh, tell you what's the plan. So I'm going to talk about this uh, TUR, the uncertainty relation for so first I'll, I'll tell you what happens, what's this relation in the steady state. And then uh, I'll, I'll show you two experimental results. Uh, one is, is the steady state and another is, uh, in recent times, again, this relation has been extended for the transient situation. So we have some experimental results for that as well. And then I'll try to summarize. Okay, so what is this relation? So uh, this relation is essentially trying to tell you uh, about uh, if you have a system which is in contact with, let's say, two baths, uh, and you keep these baths at different temperatures, and now you expect, let's say, a steady state in the long time. Now, if you look at this system in the steady state, there is a fixed current, and you can talk about the fluctuation or the variance. So if you look at this ratio, this is nothing but the relative uncertainty, right? So the question that you're asking, how small this relative uncertainty can be? And what was found is that for such two terminal system in steady state, this relative fluctuation is bounded by the so-called entropy production rate. So this sigma is the average, uh, so I missed the angular bracket, so this is the average entropy production by the system in the steady state. So entropy production is basically the measure of how far your system is from equilibrium. Uh, so if you take this sigma on this side, what it says is that this guy, you cannot make it arbitrarily small, uh, which essentially, you, well, this is like the precision, right? So there is a trade-off. So you cannot make this thing arbitrarily precise. And if you want to make it, you have to pay a cost, which is essentially the entropy production. So this was first given by Udo Seifert in 2018, uh, 2015, and followed by there are various uh, papers that came out. But this relation was uh, primarily uh, derived uh, or shown numerically for Markov processes. So underlying this is entirely stochastic process that is going on. Think about Langevin equation. Uh, but then the question that we started asking, so here the equality happens if the distribution or the, so you can talk about the distribution of current. If that is Gaussian, then that's the limit where you have the equality. Uh, but then the question that we started asking is how universal this results is, uh, this, res this bound particularly. So uh, if, if this is universal, then can I show it from the underlying fluctuation symmetry which I'll tell you uh, in the next slide. Uh, and uh, what about if I, if I start talking about or taking into account quantum effects, okay? Because this is uh, initially uh, given for classical Markov processes. So what happens if I really treat my system quantum mechanically? Uh, so I'm going to give you an example for thermal transport. So imagine you have the system, uh, the carriers could be bosonic, fermionic, and there are two reservoirs. Now there is this fluctuation symmetry, which I guess many of you are aware of, that in the steady state, you have the probability of current flowing from hot to cold is exponentially larger if you take the log on the other side, uh, the probability that heat flows from cold to hot. So this is a very universal result where delta beta is the affinity. So this is what drives the current through the system. Uh, and, and this particular thing, delta beta j, is nothing but is the average entropy production, all right? So given this, uh, certainly in the steady state, you can, since you, your current has a distribution, you can write down what's the average current, uh, what's the variance, so this C is the cumulant, and so on and so forth. You can do it for all cumulants of current, and you can expand in the steady state as a function of bias. So for example, this is like the conductance, G1 is the conductance, this is like linear response or Fourier's law, if you like, and these are higher order coefficients. Similarly for noise, uh, you have equilibrium noise, and then you have higher orders and so on and so forth. I want your attention here, this is the third cumulant and this R1 is the linear coefficient. So just remember this. So we have, so we can always expand, this is very formal exp expansion. Now what this fluctuation symmetry tells you is that there are universal relations 
between these transport coefficients, no matter whether your system quantum classical, as long as you have this, these relations are going to be universally valid. And this is, uh, in, in, you know, it's like the fluctuation dissipation. This particular thing, relation is, is just fluctuation dissipation. So if you take these expressions and try to work out this, uh, uh, what I showed in the left-hand side, the TUR, so remember this thing was proposed as greater than two. So what you, what you uh, find out is that there is a factor of two, you get the factor of two, there is no linear term in delta beta. So the first term that you get is delta beta square, and the correction, and on top of that, what you get is this R1, which is uh, this coefficient. So the fact is that if R1 is negative, at least in this order, you immediately see a violation, okay? And the fact is that these signs are not definite. You don't know about these signs. Uh, so we, we cooked up certain models and tried to investigate what happens. So here is this uh, one uh, non-interacting electron transport model, uh, which Sumilan was also trying to, you know, uh, has mentioned such kind of open system. So here, uh, so G1 is the conductance which is always positive. So what we show is that in certain regime, this R1 can certainly drop below zero. So which indicates the violation. And in fact, what you can show is that this is actually a regime where non-Markovian dynamics is going on. So I'm not getting into the details. You can find it in the paper. But uh, certainly that relation is not universal. So that's one message that you can take. Uh, we also ask the question that how does this uncertainty relation depends on the statistics of the particles or carriers that are there for the transport. So if the carriers are electrons or phonons, how does the TUR, the uncertainty relation, uh, depends? So you have, so what we found is that if you have like chain of, chain of harmonic oscillator coupled to phonon bath, uh, you can find out this coefficient exactly, which in fact Abhishek has, Abhishek and KG has done the calculation for generating function. So if you find this R1, you can actually show this is always positive. So no matter whether dynamics is Markovian or non-Markovian. On the other hand, if you take a hybrid system, let's say a single spin coupled to two bosonic bar, that's like a very hybrid statistics because spin is like a fermion and you have a boson. So it's a hybrid system. And you see the sign differences arising because of the fermion both statistics. And you start seeing violations, okay? And similarly for electron transport, uh, energy transport by electrons also, you start seeing violations. So, so depending on carriers also, the relation could, may or may not be uh, satisfied. So that's another key message here. Uh, this is the plot for spin goes on. Let's forget about it. So, uh, so there are violations that we pointed out, but then what's the, so that means the bound is loose. It's not two, it could be less than two. So something that we couldn't figure it out. But in recently there was this paper which pointed out that the bound is loose and it's, it's, a, it's less by factor of two. So in fact, it's not two, it's one. But again, this is limited in certain parameter regimes. It's not the entire result. Uh, okay, so we recently did one experiment. Uh, well, I contributed in the theoretical sense. So this is the paper in collaborations with uh, Wiseman University. So, so here we, so they worked in a regime, unfortunately, where they couldn't see the violation. So if you see this Q, which is the TUR minus two, they always see positive. So that's being that the, the regime of, in, I mean, where there is a violation, they couldn't capture that, but at least uh, they see something which is like, this is positive. So in this regime of parameters, this turns out to be positive. So this is one regime of validity of this TUR. But then uh, what, we, what we recently did was to extend this relation for the transient case. So remember we, what we did was a steady state. So transient, you just have to change the relation a little bit where instead of current, you now have to talk about integrated current. So this Q is like the heat, if you want to think about. So this is the fluctuation of heat. This is the uh, average heat squared. This is relative uncertainty getting bounded by two over the entropy production. Now it's not rate, but entropy production. So the question we are asking in the transient. So imagine you have these two system, which are at two different temperature, uh, and you just couple them and look at heat exchange and their fluctuation. And the question you're asking whether this relation is true or not. Uh, so how do you measure these guys in experiment? So one thing that you can do is to go ahead and look at the distribution uh, of this Q, P of Q. Uh, and that uh, is one way to get these guys, uh, Q squared and Q. And we recently performed an experiment where we actually measured P of Q. Uh, and we verified this fluctuation symmetry. But this is actually a hard way to get this cumulants. Uh, it's not very well converged. So what could be another alternate way? So other alternate way is very simple, in fact, is that you have these two systems and imagine that they are initially in equilibrium, individual equilibrium, and the initial state is given by a product state. 
And then you turn on the coupling. So your entire state evolves under the Liouville equation. Given this two information, you can actually compute all the moments of it uh, using this relation. So this you can actually show. Of course, there is one assumption, and the assumption is that the coupling is weak between these two. Uh, under this assumption, you can always uh, find, uh, always express, always compute all the cumulants or moments just by knowing the state of the system at any instant. So if you see this, you can actually run to the NMR lab, for example, where they always measure these states. So this is what we call quantum state tomography. So, so what we did now was that we take a very simple system. We realize this two bipartite, uh, bipartite system, each system consists of one qubit. So what we essentially have is a two qubit system. Each qubit is its own equilibrium. And then we turn on the coupling and we see the, and what we, what we do experimentally is to measure the state of the two qubits. Uh, so experimentally, we realize this Hamiltonian. And interestingly, this Hamiltonian has this symmetry for which I have the relation that I showed uh, for the, all the moments turns out to be exact because of this symmetry. So there is no work involved in order to connect these two systems. So uh, anyway, this, those are details. But essentially, we simulate in an NMR setup this particular Hamiltonian, and we do quantum state tomography to get the state of the system. Uh, and this is one of the results. So you see, so here we are comparing the state, the global of two qubit system, the total state, both theory and experiment, and you see they are matching quite nicely. The fidelity is of the order of 0.99, very close. And now the central results. So this is one regime. So now I'm showing this ratio. So here, if you look at, uh, you have first cumulant, second cumulant, third, and this. So I'll take just one minute. So this particular thing, so if this is positive, you have the validity of uncertainty relation. And in fact, you see that in this, in this parameter regime. Uh, on the other hand, so I keep all the parameters fixed, but I just change the coupling. So J is the coupling between the two qubits. But on the other hand, if I, if I go to some other value of the coupling, I see uh, that there is a violation. So it goes negative. And in fact, wherever it goes negative, the third cumulant also turns out to be negative. So, so that should remind us also the steady state case. So if you do the analytical treatment, it's, uh, it's again, it's a similar thing. You see the violation actually depends on this R1, which is the linear coefficient of the third cumulant, and that gives you a range of J, the value of the coupling. So if you have this condition, so you choose, uh, you tune J in your experiment, and if you can have this situation, then you have a violation. And in fact, that's what happens. So here, the, for a particular value of J, uh, you don't satisfy this condition, so your TUR is satisfied. And in the other case, it gets violated. So, so in fact, recently there are now results which essentially shows that how low in the transient case the bound could be. And these are the two very recent papers. And all our experimental results actually satisfies these bounds. So it violates the bound of two, but it actually agrees with all these lower bounds. So everything is in agreement. So with that, I want to conclude. So, yeah, so this uncertain relation, which was first proposed for the classical Markov process, turns out to be not universal. Uh, so the bound is loose. And we try to uh, sort of show through certain exactly solvable models. And we now are very close to getting all these various experimental results to show in which regime uh, this, this TUR is valid and which regime it can get violated. With that, I want to thank all of you. <laughs>